In previous videos, we learned about straight chain and branch chain alkanes. In this video, we want to introduce another kind of alkane that forms rings. These are called cyclic alkanes or cycloalkanes. When we have a cycloalkane, we follow the same naming conventions that we did with the straight chain or branched alkanes. The difference is that we add the word cyclo in front of the prefix used to indicate the number of carbons in the main parent chain. For example, a straight chain five carbon alkane like this would be named pentane. If it's in a cyclic form, we would name it cyclopentane. In this slide, we're asked to name the following cycloalkanes. We'll follow the same procedures we used to name the straight chain and branched alkanes in previous videos. To begin with, we need to recognize the main carbon chain. In this problem, we see that there are six carbons in the main ring and only two carbons on the side or the branch. Because of this, we'll use the ring as the main parent chain. Since the ring has six carbons, it will be hex, and then since it's a ring, it would be cyclohexane. Now, if we look at the substituent with two carbons, we know a two carbon substituent is going to be ethyl. In previous examples, we would add a number in front of the name of the substituent to indicate the location of the substituent group. However, when we have a mono-substituted ring, or a ring with only one substituent, we do not need a number because by definition, the one substituent is located on the first carbon in the ring. When we put together the name of the substituent with the name of the main carbon chain, we see that the name of this compound is ethyl cyclohexane. We should take a few minutes now and name the second compound on the screen. And then after you name it, you can restart the video and find out what the answer will be. The name of this compound will be 1-methyl-2-propyl cyclopentane. The cyclo part is because we have a ring in the main carbon chain. The pentane part because we have five carbons in the ring. We have a one carbon substituent, which is named methyl, and a three carbon substituent, which is named propyl. We assign the methyl to carbon number one in the ring because methyl is listed before propyl alphabetically in the name of the molecule. When we have an alkane, it's important to remember that the carbons have four bonds to them. And as we learned in general chemistry, an atom that has four bonds attached to it will generally be an sp3 hybridized atom. And when we learned about Vesper theory and sp3 hybridized atoms, we learned that the bond angles are approximately 109.5 degrees. This leads to some interesting consequences for what kinds of cyclic alkanes will be found in nature. If we look at a cyclopropane, the angles will be about 60 degrees. In a cyclobutane, the angles will be 90 degrees. In a cyclopentane, the bond angles will be about 108 degrees. And in cyclohexane, the bond angles will be about 120 degrees. For a cycloheptane with seven carbons, we'd expect a bond angle of 128.6 degrees. Given these angles, there's a significant mismatch between what's expected in an sp3 hybridized carbon and what we see in many of the cycloalkanes that we've talked about here. In fact, cyclopropanes and cyclobutanes are rarely found in nature due to a phenomenon called angle strain. Angle strain results from an angle that is very different from the expected 109.5 degrees. 
even with this 120 degree angle in cyclohexane, it's still quite a bit different from the preferred 109.5 degrees for sp3 hybridized carbon atoms. One way cyclohexane accounts for this and becomes more stable is by adopting a different conformation. A conformation is just a way to explain that a cyclohexane ring is not really planar. Instead, it puckers to reduce the angle strain that's expected in a cyclohexane ring. This cyclohexane conformation is known as a chair conformer. In this arrangement, the bond angles in cyclohexane are reduced to about 111 degrees, which is much closer to the preferred 109.5 degrees for sp3 hybridized carbon atoms. Another important aspect of the chair conformer is the bonds that come off of the carbon atoms in the cyclohexane ring. The bonds form two types of positions. Three bonds stick straight up and three bonds stick straight down from the ring. These are called axial bonds because they are essentially along an axis. There are also three slightly angled bonds that point down and three slightly angled bonds that point slightly up. These are called equatorial bonds. Monosubstituted cyclohexanes prefer to have their substituents in equatorial positions because there is less crowding or steric strain with the other atoms in equatorial positions. In disubstituted cyclohexanes, we have another kind of isomer. These are compounds that have the atoms connected in the same way, but in these isomers, known as geometric isomers, the two substituents can be on the same side of the ring or opposite sides of the ring. If the two substituents are on the same side of the ring, this is called a cis isomer. If the two substituents are on opposite sides of the ring, we call this a trans isomer.